Hi everybody, it's Lydia here. Oh my god, I love this book so much. Ah, it was so good. I I mean, let's be honest, I was never gonna like dislike this book because I was just so excited about it coming out and even just like opening the package that it arrived in, I was literally like verbally squeeing. So I love this book in completely different ways to how I love the first book. The first book I loved because it was just such a complete first book in a series and I couldn't for the life of me work out where the series was going to go from there. This book on the other hand was just completely different. It was clearly setting the way for the books to come in the, the rest of the series and I didn't feel that diminished the book whatsoever, I really enjoyed it and in fact I think this really allowed her to expand on the world of Scion London. One of the things that I really loved about this book was the fact that we got to know so much more about the Syndicate and about Scion London as a whole. I've mentioned in the past how much I love Samantha Shannon's world building and it is one of the reasons why I really love this series and this book really kind of highlighted how good she is at world building. I've lived my entire life in and around London and I know the areas that are mentioned in this book really well and to imagine them in a completely different way to how they are as they are in a dystopian future as they are in this book it's just so fascinating and I could picture every lane because I've walked down those roads and those lanes and it's so I just love that I love that even though she has taken this world or this, this city that you know everyone knows or everyone who lives there knows really well and um, there are going to be a lot of people who read this book who do know the spaces really well in spite of that it still feels like London and by saying that I mean you know not just the fact that the street names are the same and the street layouts and all that jazz I don't just mean that I just mean in the kind of the atmosphere that the city sort of gives off. I know this sounds really weird because it's a fantasy and it's a dystopia and it's meant to be you know all fantastical and not at all believable but that just adds something to this book. I don't know what it is but I love it. As I said before one of the things that I absolutely loved about this book was that we got to know the syndicate a lot more because that's something that was mentioned a lot in the bone season and we got kind of flashbacks from it and just little bits here and there about it but we didn't really know about the kind of workings of the syndicate and how big it was this book really goes into that and just learning about the different cohorts and the different mime lords and everything like that it was just so fascinating the fact that each individual section had distinct differences to the other sections in the syndicate I thought that was just so fascinating just because of the way that they've been built up and it was really believable it made the whole syndicate more believable one of the things that I thought was really brave in this book in a way was the fact that there wasn't that much focus on Warden and Paige's relationship or just that many scenes with them at all really and after the bone season which you know the whole crux of that book really revolved around the development and the dynamic of their relationship and how that progressed the story the fact that this book they're hard they don't have very many scenes at all together the fact that that happened I think was really brave um, I think it could have completely gone wrong but I think it worked even better and the fact that we I think it really helped to see Paige as her own person I didn't feel at all like in the bone season like she was um, kind of held back by the relationship with Warden but that said I do feel like this book largely kind of showing us what Paige was like without Warden around it it kind of really showed a different side to her um, because there was a sort of sense that in the first book a lot of what she was doing was kind of a reaction almost to him and to the situation that she was put in which is fair enough because it was a crappy situation but this book I really felt like you know we got a sense of that she was actually she is a strong character and she does um, she is very kind of set in her ways she has very strong beliefs that's one of the reasons why I love her so much because she has very strong beliefs that she just doesn't they don't waver whatsoever she is so set in her ways and she's not gonna let anyone kind of get in her way of what she believes to be the moral thing or the right thing but yeah in this book I definitely felt like we got more sense of that and her individual personality and also I think the first book was a lot about her kind of learning really about her 
um, abilities whereas in this book obviously she knows a lot more about her abilities and there isn't so much of that because she has kind of learnt a lot more. I mean obviously her abilities are still progressing but this book doesn't so much focus on individual abilities as kind of people really and I think that is one part of this book that I really quite liked the fact that this is a world or at least the world that we the part of the, this world that we see in this book that is a world which is you know run by buoyancy and it's they use it every day in their lives and it is part of who they are but this book it felt very human in a way a lot of what happened in this book it was just revolving around them and you know things just like the fighting if and when they ever get around to making this book into a film I really really hope they don't take away the it's gonna sound really crappy but the bloodiness of it um, particularly with regards to the scrimmage in the final few chapters because that was so bloody especially when Jackson killed the hair in front of Paige and he like stabbed him in the eye and it was just like whoa this is really bloody and gory and ew um, and she definitely didn't hold back and I loved that because it felt real you know the fact is that these people were fighting for their lives and oh it was just really awesome like I know that probably makes me sound really wrong in the head but it was awesome it just made it more realistic that they were you know killing each other and I think that whole like side of it there was so much death in this book you know people were being killed left right and centre and it really highlighted the sort of the kind of the fact that the syndicate sort of lived their whole lives on on kind of the edge of death in a way because they have to hide who they really are from Scion otherwise they'll be put to death and so that naturally comes out in who they are and in their actions and so people do get stabbed and and decapitated <laughs> every now and again um, and I did feel that that was really realistic. Another part of this book which I really loved was the impact of On the Merits on the Voyant Society and in particular with regards to the Vile Augurs at Jacob's Island. That whole section was so good, it was so realistic and I could imagine it felt like a real slum. It felt like there was a slum in the middle of London and I could imagine that which is rather sad in a way that I can imagine the slum popping up in the middle of London but I think that is very representative of our society today but there we go. Last year I read Behind the Beautiful Forevers by Catherine Boo and that is a real life account of life in an Indian slum and that was the kind of place I was imagining and it just really highlighted for me the world building and the realistic writing that Samantha Shannon can put into what is essentially a fantasy and I I love the fact that these days fantasies are becoming more edgy and more realistic and I think that's probably a result of the dystopian genre which has really become popular over the past decade or so and I think this book is for me one of the best ones because you could see it happening um, and that sounds crazy because buoyancy isn't like a thing in this world but if it was you could definitely see this kind of world coming out of it. One of my favourite things about fantasy books is when they are almost metaphors for the real world and in this book the whole on the merits, the whole um, uh, different kind of levels uh, of voyance, that whole thing you could see that happening in our world if buoyancy was a thing because let's face it it happens in various things in our world not least in race and in religion and in economy um, it it happens all the time and so you could see something like that popping up if buoyancy was a real thing that kind of thing in this book is really for me what keeps me gripped to this book because I could believe it happening. I could, I can imagine it and it doesn't feel too far from the truth. I said earlier that I thought this book was much more of a kind of series book in a way as regards to the, as opposed to the Bone season which was obviously a very 
it felt like a kind of its own book it could be its own book in its own right whereas this book was a series book um, that said when I got to the end of the bone season I didn't have a clue where, was, where the series was going to go from there and the same remains with this book because I just don't know what's going to happen next and I love that I love that literally anything could happen and again I do feel like the world of Scion and this world in general is so big and we're really only seeing a tiny part of it at the moment and I'm just so excited for this series and oh I just love this series so much. I want to touch on the ending for a moment, um, the ending of this book, oh my god. <laughs> I loved, firstly, I loved the scrimmage, that whole part was amazing, it was so well written and you know sometimes when there are battles in books, I know that wasn't a battle but it was like a big, you know, brawl, when that kind of thing happens in books sometimes they're pretty hard to follow, this one wasn't at all, you know, it was really easy to follow and I really enjoyed it but yet you still got a sense of the kind of scale of it which was great um, and that whole scene and everything in that chapter was just so well written. I was totally taken by surprise when Jackson started writing Paige's name on his arm. That was so clever. It was such a good twist. I guessed that her name was going to be wrong. I guessed that because I remembered that um, they changed their name when they'd moved from Ireland. So I guessed that, but it was still good. It was still so clever. And it was so interesting seeing into Jackson's dreamscape because um, that is something that is just so fascinating and Jackson as a whole is such an intriguing character not least because now from the very ending of this book I mean <laughs> he was always an intriguing character but now it's just like oh my god we know like nothing about this guy he's so fascinating um, but his dreamscape was just even more fascinating and it just presents like okay who is this guy you know um, we know so little about him and yet we see him so much and I don't know, it feels like we know a lot about him but we don't know anything and oh, he's such a good character. I mean so many characters in this book are such good characters but I think he, after Paige, because she's just my favourite, after her he is just such a good character. He's so interesting and he is, for me, he's, well certainly from this book, he's the evilest. He's the most evil in the book because he there's a part of him that makes you believe that he's a nice guy and he's doing everything and he, for everyone else and he's all wonderful and then it's like nope he's really got ulterior motives and he's actually quite ruthless and cold-blooded and he's actually pretty horrible um, and a villain like that is just oh there's something so interesting about villains like that I love them they're just so fascinating I could let you go on talking about this book for days, I'm not going to because I've already rambled enough. I have so much more to say so I'm going to link my um, Goodreads review when I've written that in the description below, I haven't written it yet because I wanted to kind of have a day to resonate and think about the book, um, yeah. But um, when I when I have done that I will link that in the description below, I will put it on my Twitter. But. That is it for today. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm gonna be no. <laughs> My brain is just gone. This book has killed me. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow with another video. But until then, bye.